What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Fresh Sprint Sports, and today we're going to be doing a prospect breakdown on Joseph Osai. If you're new here, make sure you hit the like, subscribe on it, would be greatly appreciated. I make prospect breakdowns every single weekday, too, every single weekday, and a positional rankings on every single weekend leading up to a mock draft once a month. So, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe on it, would be greatly appreciated. So, Joseph Osai is a 6'3", 245-pound junior edge rusher from Texas. And for stats from in 29 games in three seasons, he's had 165 total tackles, three tackles for loss, 11.5 sacks, two interceptions, five inter and five forced fumbles. Before his firm, he was the first, uh, he won first team, uh, no, he was first in Big 12 in tackles for loss uh, this year and made first team all Big 12 this year. Um, so, yeah. Now let's get into the pros and cons. Pros for him is his physically he's physically gifted. He has elite height, uh, good size, and length. He's an outstanding athlete, um, and he has the ability um, to display his agility, balance, quickness, and flexibility. Um, so he's just good at basically everything. Number two, he's he's a pass rusher. Um, as a pass rusher, he's great. He has the ability to bend around the corner as a pass rusher. And uh, he has good bull rush uh, moves using his play strength to move defenders and push to the pocket. He has a good pass uh, rush plan and does a great job of attacking the linemen and adjusting his pass rush skills. So um, his pass rushing skills on the fly. Um, number three, uh, and yeah, that's basically all oh, three. Uh, number three, though, is his versatile. It says good ball rusher. It should actually say versatility. Uh, he has a skill set to play, you know, at linebacker or edge rusher. Also, he has good fundamentally uh, tackling in space. Cons, though, for him is his setting the edge. Uh, has to be more consistent um, in setting the edge when, you know, defending against the run. Um, not allowing, you know, making more of a barrier uh, around the edge. Number two is his cover. He struggles in coverage as a linebacker and can get lost in coverage and in zone and miss a lot of his assignments. And number three, he can get moved easily by higher uh, level offensive tackles. So if there's like a really good offensive tackle, he can be, you know, moved off the ball and, you know, get pushed off the ball. He just has to become more stronger to consistently play against you know, offensive tackles that are really good because the league and the NFL, there's a lot of really good defensive tackles, and he won't be able to stop the run, allowing a whole bunch of big holes if he just cannot get past that level. Next, we have his pro comparison. I said Demarcus Ware, both huge linebackers and uh, small defensive ends. Um, the versatility in both of the game is what I find like more comparable. Uh, they both can wear found a way to, you know, be able to fit in an outside linebacker and defensive game plan uh, for any team. You know, he can fit in a 4-3, a 3-4, any other type of defense where could have played. Um, and that's why I said that, you know, I can see uh, Osai doing the exact same thing, you know, playing different, uh, playing, getting drafted by any team, basically, and playing whatever formation they want him to play in. Teams, though, that I think he can go to is the Patriots. Uh, their defense, you know, their defense requires more versatile type of guys, and they do have a lot of them. And, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they got him at here at number 15. I was saying the Dolphins, but then I remember the Dolphins have the 18th pick, so I think the Patriots won't pass up on him uh, if they get the opportunity. But, you know, there could be, you know, pay still there, or we'll say, still out there so we never know but um their front seven is becoming weak and even though chase winovich did step up this year having a good season they still need some help inside the box um and yeah the D the offense is not the reason why they didn't make the playoff but um the defense was disappointing too um it's a top three defense you know for the past couple years and now they're in the bottom 15, so it's really disappointing to see their defense like it. And I think they need to something that's something they big they really need to work on.
to wrap it all up, he's a top 20 pick in my opinion. Um, he's part of a dominant top three edge rusher group that I think are definitely going to be in the top, you know, 20th range. Um, do I think he passes, you know, Rose and Pay? No, but he could rise to be in the top 15 because if they rise, you know, he might rise too. Uh, so I could see him in the top 15 possibly, but I want to keep it, you know, extended because this isn't January. So, um. I don't see a top 10 pick out of him, though, because a lot of teams do need other positions, and there's a lot of good offensive players this year, like at receiver, quarterback. We have a nice lot of modern linemen um, and a good cornerback group, too. So his versatility um, will make, you know, it hard for to be, you know, pushed back and, you know, the combine in the offseason and whatever he does badly for him to be pushed back because I feel like his versatility – really is what's holding up um, and keeping teams wanting him more. Um, if he can get to that 260 range, if teams can get him to that 260 range to be like DeMarcus Ware, then probably, um, I mean, obviously can't gain 15 pounds in one summer, but I'm saying, like, um, if he has that potential to go and get that 15 pounds, get stronger, he'll be a gem in this draft. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe button. Make sure to comment down below. And stay tuned for the next one. Peace.